actually make something fashionable? Is it the cost of the garment, what it shows, what it covers, or how much suffering is required for wearing it? Welcome back, my fellow bumblebees. It is me, your new, sometimes host, Amanda. Today we're counting down the top 10 scandalous Victorian era fashion trends. And boy, oh boy, are there some scandalous things on this list. What fashionable item from the past or the present do you think is the most scandalous, and why? Number 10, tulle skirts. Tulle skirts were a major problem. Although these were chiefly worn by ballerinas, ballet has always been a destructive form of dance when it comes to basically how it affects the body. I mean, many ballerinas literally have their toenails fall off as a result of dancing on point. That's just kind of like an assumed part of the profession if you're dancing point. However, we aren't even talking about the feet here. We're actually talking about how safe the costumes are, the literal garments they dance around in, not even their shoes or their feet. The answer to that question, they're not very safe. Considering that before electricity, many danced on candlelit stages, you'd likely be horrified to hear just how flammable these costumes were. There are many examples throughout history of ballerinas and dancers getting too close to candle flames while in their costumes and basically lighting on fire. And I gotta say, I've listened to multiple podcasts that have talked about this, so I could recommend some to you. If you want some, let me know in the comments. I'll send them your way. Emma Livery is by far one of the most famous ballerinas though to have caught flame. She actually did initially survive the incident, but she died eight months later as a result of her injuries. That sounds terrible. And there were honestly countless others who suffered similar fates. The really terrible thing is back in the day, this is something new that I found out, we actually had the means to make fire retardant costumes, but they affected the aesthetic of the costumes, making the costumes appear a little bit more stiff. So rather than try to save the more than thousands of ballerinas who died in even just a single year, we decided to opt for beauty over safety. To me, that's pretty scandalous, I'm gonna be honest. Scandalous and disappointing. <laughs> And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Bumblebee and you love learning history with us, be sure to let us know by clicking that subscribe button. Honestly, we got a lot of fun facts for you and I don't want you to miss out. Number nine, showing some shoulder. Ooh. <laughs> The crazy thing is we actually just came from an era before this when showing shoulders was actually considered very fashionable. But by the time the Victorian era really started to kick into gear, this was actually considered completely improper. Paintings even had to be repainted to reflect this new trend because showing a bit of shoulder literally frightened some people. They were like, oh, I can't look at it. Repaint that painting, cover those shoulders up. I'm not joking, that's a real thing. And don't even get me started on cleavage. Shoulders were previously considered to be something beautifully showcased from gowns that had both lower and wider necklines. This was considered beautiful and sexy in a good way. But with puritanical views taking over anything considered too beautiful and definitely anything considered sexy would be seen as bad and sinful. So we had to cover those shoulders up. <laughs> Man, if I traveled back to the Victorian era right now, they'd be like, girl, what you doing with those shoulders? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my shoulders and my ankles are out today. Oh, scandalous. Number eight, the gall dress. Well, Mary Antoinette was not around during the Victorian era, living and dying just before it began, really. Her presence was felt in regards to the mark that she left on the fashion scene. Mary Antoinette was often seen as a woman of scandal, not just because of the stories of her love affairs and her actually being misquoted here as responding to the poor, starving people of France by saying, let them eat cake, but also because of her fashion sense. While by today's standards, Mary Antoinette would be seen as probably being over overdressed among us, by her time standards, she was often seen as presenting herself as immoral, with many of her dresses resembling more undergarments of the day than the usual more modest finery and typical style. Case and point, a portrait that was done in her chemise style dress, known as a gall, by painter Vigie Lebrun, was condemned for how it portrayed the monarch. People actually admired Lebrun's work in terms of the painting itself, but didn't like the dress that she had painted the queen in, as they felt it appeared too intimate and informal. As a result, the painting was actually removed from display and Vigie was forced to repaint Mary Antoinette's dress into something more formal and fitting. Because it's just it's too risque. We were like, we can't look at the queen like this. It looks terrible. Repaint it. 
I don't know why I'm making everyone British when we're in France, but there you go. <laughs> Number seven, fainting room. By today's standards, fainting rooms might seem quite scandalous. And while they were very fashionable back in the day, often being linked to corsets, at least so we think, in reality, fainting rooms actually had less to do with corsets and more to do with people's desires to nap without having to bother with all the business of undressing, getting in bed, getting back up, having the bed remade, and completely redressing. Instead, fainting rooms were a place where you could sneak off to for some peace and quiet during a busy afternoon or major social event or simply a place you could just go to rest for a bit without having to do the whole sleep time ritual that usually accompanied, you know, going to bed. What's more scandalous is the fact that the women who were known to actually faint back in the day, that is true, and even today, women still faint, people still faint, had this malady attached to corsets by physicians, usually, of course, men back in the day, who simply just didn't know what was wrong with these women to make them faint so much. So what did they do? They blamed corsets, of course. Although to be fair, corsets are notoriously bad for your health. But still, I just love that these doctors were like, I don't know what's wrong with this woman. Corsets, they make her faint, that's what it is. Probably iron deficiency, heat, being overdressed in the heat, there's a lot of reasons why people faint. Number six, Shields Green. This dye color became super popular in the Victorian era, but is also known for being literally made out of poison. If you're worried that women of the day didn't know that at the time, uh, nah, they were actually informed on this, yet they still chose to wear this color because, I mean, it was simply too gorgeous. Hey, it's worth it. A Little bit of arsenic poisoning, no problem. It did cause symptoms of arsenic poisoning among those who wore the dresses dyed with this color because I mean, it's dye, it's, this fabric is still rubbing up against your skin, still getting absorbed through your pores, but it actually caused even more harm to those who made and dyed the garments with it. Cause you know, they're the ones actually breathing that in and stuff. Yikes. Number five, bloomers. Bloomers were one of the first styles of pants women gravitated towards in the Victorian era. They were worn in rebellion of the often unruly skirts of the day, which made it hard to move around and well, honestly, probably do anything. Female cyclists instead preferred to wear bloomers, causing much scandal as people felt it was improper for women to dress so masculinely. How dare you? Basically, bloomers are like more floofy pants is how I would describe them and people felt that pants should be reserved for men to wear even the floofy ones they were like women can't have any pants not even floofy pants I gotta say I would totally rock some Victorian era bloomers and be causing all the scandals myself if I were around back then they definitely look more comfy than pretty much almost everything else women were wearing the bloomers got their name from a prominent American feminist of the time Amelia bloomer though she herself did not invent them, but she was a person that basically spoke out and was like, I, why can't women wear pants? Although Amelia Bloomer did fight hard for women's rights, she herself is not someone I believe we should just straight up glorify, to be clear. She also said some pretty terrible things about Native Americans, and she also seemed to be content with civilians taking the law into their own hands and literally hanging people deemed undesirable in their community, so it's a big yikes from me. Number four, corset. Corsets didn't originate in the Victorian era, but they definitely became iconic in regards to the fashion of that time period. That's because slim waists, they came back into fashion, baby. They also became iconic for the fact that they were causing great damage to the people wearing them. Well, I too, do love to don a corset from time to time. It is important to make sure that you don't push it when you're wearing them, and it's important to remember that this extreme form of shapewear literally has a history of moving people's insides around as a result of wearing them daily or even just regularly. Honestly, even me wearing it every now and then is not good for you. Just corsets aren't good for you. So even just wearing a corset, you know, every now and then, it's not good probably shouldn't do it. I probably shouldn't do it, but am I gonna do it? Yeah, probably. And even back in the Victorian era, when they were trending again, we knew that corsets were bad for you. And it made this item quite the risque one, despite it at the time being coveted and widely used by many out there. That was actually like even a topic back then. People were like, shouldn't people be wearing these? This seems dangerous. Number three, flashing. Some ankle. <laughs> can't see it on camera, I can't show it to you because it'd be too scandalous, so scandalous. As silly as this sounds now, especially with it being summer right now, 
as I'm talking about this. A time when being underdressed is really just being comfortable. This was, in fact, a huge thing in the Victorian era. Women were often covered head to toe from the top of the neck all the way down to the ankles. It was common for women to even wear multiple long skirts and stockings in an attempt to just fully cover their legs and ankles. So those who decided to flash a little bit of ankle with their fashion choices, whoo, they were considered quite risque. Number two, hoop skirts. As deadly as they were definitely fashionable during part of the Victorian era. The hoop skirt, also known as caged crinoline, was a type of skirt that was built like a cage. There's various different ones which were made out of different materials, but the idea is it's literally a big hoop cage that you wear and then you put a dress over top of that or a skirt over top of that. The idea was to add volume to the bottom of your outfit, which would also help to make your waist look even slimmer. Something that was very fashionable back in the day and something still coveted by many in regards to modern beauty standards today. Hoop skirts though were deadly because you would often misjudge the size of your skirt, which could cause all kinds of accidents. Also, many of the materials used to build the hoop skirts and dresses that went over top were very flammable. Many people died from catching fire or getting their skirts caught in machinery or even carriage wheels. So yeah, don't wear a hoop skirt if you have to do anything or be, be near flames or just be alive in the Victorian era because there were open flames like everywhere. <laughs> number one, the one piece. I like that I saved this one for number one. I didn't realize I was doing that, but I knew subconsciously. The one piece swimsuit created quite the controversy when it, it came into fashion near the end of the Victorian era. And the really wild thing is it initially pretty much covered almost like your entire body. But, and it's a big but for this era, it was very fitted. So because it hugged the body, as swimwear really should do so that you can, you know, actually swim, it was considered to be quite scandalous. Not only that, but of course the one piece also wanted to maintain your modesty by not having your skirt float up in the water around you, giving everyone potentially a free show. So it was fashion to be pants, you know? Oh boy, a woman in pants without a skirt? Scandalous. Scandalous. How dare, how dare these women try to swim? <laughs> we didn't say women could swim. Someone put a law so that these women can't swim. <laughs> Get them out of these swimsuits. Well, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I will see you in the future. Bye.